In this video, we'll cover two entertaining and free APIs. API stands for Application Programming Interface. We're going to start with the iTunes API. We're actually using the same app that we have in our courses so that you can see some of the structure and the system that we use. So I have a checklist here of everything we need. And the first step is resources. We have to find out all of these other pieces. So this website will get you there. We're going to jump right to their resources and it gives you all kinds of information. So we're able to check off our first box because we found the resources. The next step is to get the URL base. So if we come back to our instructions. It is right here. So we're going to copy that and we're going to paste that right in our app with command Z to make it the same font so we have our check mark we aren't sure what some of these mean but we know that this is the base for sure usually there's an api key needed but in this instance itunes does not require a key you don't even have to create an account so that makes it much easier if we did we would put that right here next we have to see the available parameters because they have this parameter key value so we look down and here are the parameters. They give some additional information, description, which ones are required, which are currently term and country, and then a little bit more information about the values. So this gives us some examples, but you can see there are quite a few parameters here that we use in the initial call. This isn't what we get back, this is what we put in the initial call so we'll check that box i put them all right here so they're easy referred to later and a star next to some additional information with subcategories but we know we need term so now we want to test it but we aren't quite sure how to use this so let's just come back and see if they have an example and they do they show term equals Jack plus Johnson. Those are no spaces. So here's another parameter, limit equals 25. So they show several examples, which is very nice. There are many times where the documentation is not quite that easy. So let's test this, but we know we are going to have to use something other than the parameter key value. So we'll take that out and we'll go to our freestyle. We'll just paste this in and we know that it was term and we'll just put in a fancy name here to see what we get by doing a simple call if we go into layout there is nothing fancy here it is just insert from url with the target field getting the response we're using one field for the url which is right here if there were curl options we would use this one here so nothing elaborate, very simple and clean, just so you can see how simple it can be. We did get a response back, we can see here, and we formatted it right up here. So we know there's no error, we know that that works, that part of it works, so we're going to click that. We can also now see the available fields if we go into this response so we set up a json parsing screen which just makes it easier to find this information and look through the json so here are the two keys everything else falls inside this results and there's a lot there so we want to drive down deeper and we'll click on results and there are 50 because json is zero based so if we wanted to go into the first record we can see we now have these keys that match all of this so this is the information that gets returned which gives you an idea of the kind of fields that you might want you don't have to use all of these but it does give you some good information so if we wanted to do the name for example we see this name, we'll scroll through to the next record here. There's the trilogy. There's a few more interesting things as you go through, but we'll just come back up 
to maybe even a description if we wanted to have a little bit more information to see if we could find the right one. Some of them have information, some of them don't. But we can check this off as now having our available fields. And the other thing to make note of is if we were solely using the collection name, for example, this is the key when we use the JSON get element. We need this as the key or index or path parameter in that function. So this is the part that gets us right to here. And if we go to the next record, we're seeing each of those. So now we know the keys, we know the fields, we can create a script, which is actually quite simple. If we look at the choices here, we're just setting the search term and we're getting rid of the spaces because you're not allowed to have those. And I put in some options if you want to use other parameters. I have the parameter name and then we have a field to choose and we're adding them if a choice was made. And then we have the keys so that we can extract the information that we want, like how many there are, maybe the track ID, the artwork. And then we have the call. We're setting this final URL with all of the parameters that we sent. This is the simple call. We do some error checking and now we set the response so that we can parse it. So very simple script, so we can check that off of our list. Now we are left with interface, and that is the final step. And here is where you get to take all kinds of control. Now that we know these pieces, you can have this layout any way that you want. I just made it quite easy, and we'll just put in the same search again, but you can change the country. You can say, I want just a movie any of these categories they have a callback function maybe we want a hundred or two hundred is the maximum that you can get change the language and decide if you want explicit lyrics and a few other parameters so we click send request and sure enough we got back 200 so if we look at those results we can scroll through and there are quite a few who would have known that there were that many and we can drive through even more and see some very interesting pieces. And now that we have control over the interface and the information, now we can get very creative on how we want the layout to look, which in this case, I made it to look exactly like the iTunes app. So we simply type in a search term, which if we type in what we did before, then it's going to give us the results that we can choose. We can make one of them a favorite and move it up just like the iTunes app, which kind of demonstrates the power of having it in FileMaker is now you can do whatever you want. Maybe you've always wished that the heart icon was over here or that you could search by other things. Just anything that you want, now you get to control how it is and of course, you can click on that and jump right to the URL because that was something that we got back in our JSON. So I hope that opens up some ideas and possibilities of what can be done when you have control and you've gone through all of these checkboxes. Another entertaining API is the OMDB API. At the time of this recording, there was not an API for IMDB, but I did find this one, which was also free. We're going to follow our same process by going through our checklist. So we have our resource place and we'll look there. It has just what we would expect with an option to become a patron, but the rest of it is free you may start to see some things that are familiar, but we know this is our resource, so we're checked off there. Next, we need our URL base, which we see there are actually two. One is for posters and one is for data. You can see the difference is the IMG, but there is a note that the posters are only available to patrons, but the data is still uh, a free part. So we'll just be using this. 
but let's get our URL base and we'll put that in our app. We'll hit Command Z and we now have our URL base. Here it is requiring a key. So when you go to this, if you have not already created your account, then you'll need to sign up. You don't have to pay anything. You just put in your email address and they'll email you a key. So I've already done that. So I have my key here. Next are the available parameters. If we scroll down, we can see there are a few, not as many as iTunes, but there are several the way you search. And here it's actually going to give uh, an IMDB ID option if you know that. But you also have a way of just searching for the title. One difference is this returns one item because of searching for this. This one returns several and you even have multiple pages. But a lot of these parameters are almost exactly the same. So we have our parameter listing. I added them here for ease of use later. So let's just test it. We know we're going to need our key here. So let's just go ahead and replace that. And we know that these are the parameters, but it's nice to have an example if they give one and they actually do. So let's type in, we'll use the same one. We'll do a search and we can see this is how you would formulate that request. T equals matrix at the end. They don't have the part where you need the key in here. So that's interesting, but it is demonstrative of how many times the documentation is not quite as accurate as you would like. So if we go to our freestyle and we just plug in our URL here, we don't need any of these like we do with other APIs, but we do need our parameter. So if we simply put in the T equals matrix like we did before, and then we click send request, it looks like we got something and sure enough, there it is. So let's look at our JSON and see what we can find. We have a lot of information here regarding actors and plots and released. So we go back to our checklist. We know that it tested and we can now see the available fields as well as the keys that we would need if we wanted to jump down and see the actors or perhaps the plot if we wanted to see that. So we have our keys, we have our fields. So now we can simply look at our script, which is right here. Very simple, very similar. We're just seeing which option they're choosing. And in our interface, we're allowing for multiple parameters if they so choose. We don't even need everything we had before, but we have our insert from URL. And now we have our error checking and we can do anything we want with our JSON parsing. So we have our script, we have our keys, and last is going to be the interface. We have a very simple layout for the different parameters that we have, and you have control. You can choose which ones you want to allow and which ones you don't. So we'll use Lethal Weapon this time as a movie. We'll use a full plot and JSON, of course, and we get our response. It was true and everything seems to fall under the search area. We have 10 results. And if we look at the first one, we have poster title type year and the IMDB number, which could be used in other things, but we'll look at the title. There's one, two, three, four, and other titles as well. So now we have everything that we need, except we did not have the poster because we weren't a patron. However, if you notice, when we looked at the search and we pulled up, we'll just do this one. It does have the URL for the poster. If we just make a simple call, we can jump right to that poster behind the scenes. I hope this has been helpful. If you want to learn more about more complex APIs, then check out our courses at ProductiveComputing.com. Thanks for watching.